I love Tabuki on a Friday night. Next Friday, right? T Rex to see in town. They are playing the Victoria Hall. And joining me on the line right now, we've got Daniels. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Good afternoon. How are you? I'm not bad, mate. Not bad. It's Friday. A lot of people have been back to work this week. So um, for them, it's a bit of a relief to be Friday, I reckon. <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> It'd be a good relief for some, you know, a bit of cosmic rock for everybody. Yeah, yeah. So next Friday, of course, you land in Stoke on Trent. It's your first gig of the year, isn't it? It is. That's when we kick off the actual tour. Um, quite early on in January as well. But um, hopefully, you know, on, on the on the twelfth, you know, people will kind of come out and have a good time. Yeah, and you've been to Stoke before. It's a given. The good people down here, they love um, to boogie, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've played Stoke off and on through the, the, uh, over the last two decades, I think, and um, I think that we started playing it with, with Slade, first of all, back in the, back in the day, um, and then um, when we went out on our own, we started um, playing Stoke on our own, and, um, and it's, it's worked every time, and the nice thing is people come out and see us, and we've got a very loyal following, which is um, nothing much I can ask for more than that. No, no, not at all. And because uh, here in Stoke-on-Trent, Slade, like you've just mentioned, and Roy Wood were just up the road, so glam rock was so big here. And the Victoria Hall, where you're playing, all the bands played there in the 70s. Yes, yeah. Well, it's, it, again, it's you know, you mentioned Roy Wood. Um, Roy Wood's someone else that I know, and we played plenty of gigs with him as well. So it's nice to kind of keep it all in this kind of big glam rock family where you've got you've got us now and you've got Slade, you've got you've got Roy Wood. Um, there's, there's, there's not that many left. So yeah. people have got to come out now and, um, you know, enjoy it while you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, last year, 2017, obviously it's gone now, but it was quite a, an anniversary year. Of course, for Mark Bowling, he would have been 70 last year. And yeah. uh, for you, you, the band, you were going 25 years, I think, last year, weren't you? I've been doing it for 25 years, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, it's a, a long time. I mean, uh, uh, more than Mark Boland did it, which is ironic, really, isn't it? Uh, but yes, it was a very special year, because Mark, it was Mark's 40th anniversary as well, and um, we um, ended up playing quite a, um, a big gig where we invited, you know, friends of ours to come on stage and sing a few Mark Bolton songs. We did. We, we arranged this thing with the Shepherds Bush Empire, and um, people we know, like Mark Almond, came along and sang some songs with us, and Holly Johnson from Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols, and we had Tony Visconti flew over from New York, who was Mark Bolton and David Bowie's producer, yeah. and he conducted a string quartet for us, and um, it was a, a really um, um, lovely, lovely evening, having all, um, you know, quite um, big stars singing on the stage with us, really. Yeah, it's a testament to how good the band is because, um, you know, Mark's family, Gloria, uh, Rowan, they all support the band. And um, if you go onto the website, the people that you've worked with, like you just mentioned a few uh, over the years, um, it's just been brilliant. Yeah, and it's it's kind of been brilliant for me yeah. <laughs> as well, you know, because you know when I when I formed this band back in 1992, I never dreamt that um, in you know now right at this date that um, I would look back and and think, my God, I've played with people um, like Mott the Hoople, Ian Hunter, mm-hmm. Uriah Heep, all these bands, um, Slade, Sweet, um, that I grew up buying those records, and now I'm on the same stage as, as, as they are, yeah. and, um, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, after a while, you can't, you can't help but get a little bit blasé, because after you've done a few gigs with these people, you tend to go on the same, you know, you, you are on the same level as they are, um, but, you know, when we first started doing it, it was quite amazing thinking that um, I've still got their albums and singles yeah. that I bought when I was a teenager, and now um, I'm, I know these people, and um, some of them are our friends now, which is quite unique. It's amazing to me, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can remember um, seeing you in interviews in the nineties, and um, you collected quite a lot of memorabilia. Like you said, you bought records, but you collected memorabilia, um, of course, T Rex stuff. And um, mm. was that what sort of led you into making the band? The fact you were just a big fan, and you know, you wanted yeah, to, that's to ex- do something. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's exactly it. You know, I, I see these a lot of um, tribute bands, and. Um, um, I, the, the, when you ask them personally or where they're interviewed sometimes, they, they, they are very wary of their answers because some of them aren't exactly um, super fans of the artists that they're portraying. With me, I formed to your ecstasy purely and simply because I'm such a me- big Mark Boland fan. And that was the only reason I formed it. The fact that it's been going 25 years, 
Um, I can only sort of say it's because I'm still such a big fan, and every time I go on stage, it actually feels like I'm doing it for the first time again because the, the, the music's so so fantastic. Yeah. Um, Mark was such a massive part of the 70s, and obviously, uh, like I say, he died in 77. And um, I think his legacy, you know, obviously you carried it on, but um, should be bigger because, like, how much he sold record-wise in the 70s. Um, yeah. You know, he, he stopped Elton John getting to number one, and, you know, the the actual legacy. I don't think is as big as it should be. You know, people talk about him and everything like that, but, you know, I don't yeah. think he's on the pedestal as some other people who were around at the same time. No, you are right. I mean, what makes me laugh, you say that he stopped um, those big artists getting to number one. Um, the other side of that, of course, is you had people like um, Benny Hill preventing Mark getting to number one. <laughs> yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> so you had the other side of it. But, but I know exactly I know exactly what you mean. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, people kind of name drop like, um, um, you know, you said Elton John, you've got Rod Stewart, all those um, big, big, massive stars now. And Mark tends to get... Um, not as much publicity as those other really big big stars. But there again, I suppose they're still alive. And Mark died when he was 29. And I think that's got a lot to do with it. I think if Mark was alive today, you know, I think he would have got that credibility that he rightly deserves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, talking about T-Rex, you've played thousands of shows um, across the world... Um, besides the UK, where do you really like to go out and play, or is it just a case you like to play anywhere? Japan. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, we've, we've played Europe, oh God, dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Um, and we've played the Far East as well, places like Abu Dhabi and places like that. But um, when we were offered the... Uh, we, we, we were lucky enough to get two really good tours of Japan, one of, one of which the concert was actually filmed by NHK TV and televised, and that was quite pretty good. Um, but Japan um, is an, it's like another world. It's not just the gig. It's everything that surrounds the gigs, because out there, people still love rock and roll yeah. as much as they used to in the 70s in this country um, because you can walk down one street in Japan and one street will, will be full of just record shops believe it or not mm. that, that all there would be is just one street of record shops selling official albums bootleg albums um, DVDs, official and non-official. No one seems to mind out there. Um, but the nice thing, of course, is, um, I, and I've said this plenty of times as well, doing the second tour of Japan um, made it even better because um, it, it enabled me to meet up with David Bowie as well. I've seen the picture. So was, yeah, I've seen the that, picture today. That, yeah, so that was quite nice to, to, to have a, a little chat with him because if we hadn't gone to Japan, um, that meeting would never have happened. Did he tell you about his, his experience with Mark? Well, it was only a few, literally a few minutes, because we were both on the bullet train platform. We were both um, both played gigs um, in a place called Fukuoka in Japan. Um, he was got off to Russia, and we were back to Tokyo to do a tour. So while waiting for the bullet train, that's when we had the little chat and the photos <laughs> together. But you know, when I went up to him, I, I went up to him and I said, um, "Hi, my name's Daniels. I'm from this bank called T Rex to see." And he said to me, I know who you are. I've been reading about you <laughs> because we, be, we were getting quite a lot of press out there. So the nice thing about that was that, the, you know, we were able to have a discussion um, one to one, not him thinking, well, who, who is this guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he already knew me. But I, I did say to him, you know, do you still miss Mark? Because I don't know if you know, but Mark and David were really good friends. Yeah, yeah. And he, without even sort of thinking about it, said to me, said to me I miss him every day. Um, and that, it's you know, such a nice thing to, to say mm-hmm. um, without even thinking about it. And I thought, yeah, um, I, I, I now believe that he, he still misses, you know, he still miss Mark. That hopefully they're together now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as well as playing live, you've uh, released your own singles and albums. Um, Blue Moon Juice, I think, was the last one, wasn't it, in 2015? Um, the, the, the last, the, well, the last release we did was on Madman Records, which was a, a red vinyl seven inch of, of White Christmas. Yes, that was the very that was the very last um, one that we did. We we reissued that, and uh, we had represses for for the Christmas just gone. Um, we just thought it would be a nice thing for a tribute band that's attributing to Mark Bolan playing a Bing Crosby song um, in the style of Hot Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we just thought that. 
we just thought that'd be quite a, a cool thing to do, and um, and it took off quite well. So um, um, again, um, we had repressings done of that, and they sold out. And out of all the repressings, I think there's very few. Um, you know, left in storage now, which is really um, nice. So we've released a few things um, on Columbia Records as well, and also um, on Madman Records. And it's nice for a tribute band to put our own stamp on them, uh, yeah. because it's pointless doing songs, recording songs, trying to replicate them identically without putting um, your own little feel of, like, uh, if you're playing a, a lead guitar break or something. It's nice to keep the spirit of Mark Bolden and the sound that he made, but perhaps make it just a tiny bit different, bringing it into, to, into the 21st century. Yeah. Um, because everybody that wants to hear the, you know, how it was and how it should be played might as well go out and hear the, the originals. Of course, yeah. And you also do, like you said, you've been Crosby, but you've done other songs in the style of T-Rex as yes. well. Yeah, yeah. we've recorded Cigarettes and Alcohol, um, the... Um, uh, the, the Noel Gallagher um, Oasis song um, because Noel admitted it, uh, that he um, completely ripped off Get It On yeah. so what we thought it'd be a nice idea is to record Cigarettes and Alcohol but identical to Get It On <laughs> so we did, again the old uh, White Christmas trick so we yeah. did the, an Oasis song in the style of a, uh, a T-Rex song but we also as, as well sometimes you know when we like we've just played um, New Year's Eve and we like to do something a little bit different so we sometimes play um, the old um, undertone song as well, Teenage Kick. Yeah, yeah, good song. Because that's very, not, as, uh, not only is it slightly Bolanic in its own way, but um, one of my favourite DJs who helped Mark Bolden as well on his, uh, on his way to stardom was John Peel. And um, John Peel has always been one of my favourite um, DJs back in the day. And it, it's also, it's, when we play it, it's nice to say this is for John Peel as well as Mark yeah. Mark Bolden and the undertones as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, well, we're looking forward to seeing you in Stoke. Uh, it's only a week away, uh, yeah. so yeah, ride into town and give you all you've got next Friday. Uh, we're going to we play. We're going to play cigarettes and alcohol. I've got that version with me, T Rex C. Right. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming on the phone. Like I say, enjoy your time in Stoke next week. Cheers. Thank you for having me on your show. It's been a pleasure.